Rose Steph here, and welcome to Prophecy Insights. Uh, today, I want to talk about Isaiah 55, verses 8 through 9. The Lord um, really makes it clear that his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. Here's what the scripture says. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So, um, we see immediately in this scripture that the way we think and the way God thinks are worlds apart. And that leads me now to what's going on in the Middle East, what's happening in our world today, and how all of this is really God preparing the world for ultimately the return of Christ. But right now is preparing us for a new a new path. Things are not going to go back the way they were. That's behind us. And a new course is being charted right in front of us. Now, I don't think that new course is going to be comfortable. I don't think that that for at least the believers, I don't think it's going to be something we look forward to. But the Lord is going to use all this chaos and madness. The COVID-19 imaginary pandemic because that's what I believe it really is. I think it's been all, and I've said it before, it's been ginned up by the media and by doctors that have a vested interest in ginning it up. In fact, I, I believe some medical professionals have been bought off to go along with the with the lie that COVID-19 is this huge pandemic that we should all be afraid of. Uh, if it were that, uh, believe me, uh, we would have so many more deaths. Uh, you would have the caskets stacked up in auditoriums if it was a real true pandemic. I mean, the Spanish flu, the bubonic plague, it was horrible. And the bodies were just thrown into ditches. It was so bad. We haven't seen anything like that with this uh, new flu bug that has been sent to us by none other, none other than China. Anyway, God's ways and our ways are very far apart. Let's look at what's going on with the UAE peace treaty uh, between Israel and the UAE that I talked about a few days ago. Right now, look what's happening. Um, I had mentioned in my talk, I think last week, that this was going to lead to other countries wanting to come in to this peace arrangement. Right now, we have Bahrain, Oman, the Saudis, and Qatar that want in to the peace deal. Now, publicly, the Saudis are going, if Israel doesn't recognize the Palestinians, um, then we're not, you know, we're not coming in. They're saying that publicly. But the Saudis are going to end up coming into this because the Bible says they will. Just read Ezekiel 38, and you'll see that Dedan is really Saudi Arabia, and Dedan is going to be 
sided with Israel and have a friendship with Israel, according to the Bible. So I expect Saudi Arabia will come in. And um, so this is happening now. Say it starts off with the UAE and with Israel, and now it's like dominoes. And more and more, I think there's up to 10 Arab countries now that want to join this new pact between Israel and the UAE. Now, a little, a, a little footnote on the UAE that we need to be aware of. The UAE is the financial center of the Middle East. I mean, nothing that happens in the Middle East uh, is not known by the UAE. And think of the UAE like Wall Street, okay, in New York, you know, like the New York Stock Exchange. I mean, they, everything that happens, the UAE knows about it first. So they're the mega financial center for the entire Middle East. And decisions are made through the UAE that end up uh, guiding and directing the Arab nations in the Middle East. Now you have some outliers like Iran, uh, Turkey now, North African countries that, uh, that are not part of the pact of, in the UAE. They're on the outside looking in. Uh, but what's going to happen, uh, I believe, according to scripture, and again, I direct you back to uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39, what's going to happen, the geopolitical pressure is going to intensify so much that many of these Arab countries are going to join in the pact and I believe, uh, and let me say this, Richard, thank you for your question. Let me answer Richard's question like this. The question is, do you believe that we are in the times? I'm assuming Richard meant end times or in the times leading up to the peace agreement or the covenant that the Antichrist will confirm uh, in Daniel 9.27. Uh, uh, the ninth chapter of Daniel as well talks about all this. Um, yeah, are we in the last days? Okay, here's what I think. A lot of pastors and prophecy experts believe that we're in the last days right now, okay? I believe, this is me now, and, and this comes from over 40 years of studying the Bible, but what I believe that the Bible teaches is that really the last days is going to end up being the final seven years that Daniel talked about uh, in Daniel. Uh, you can read Daniel uh, chapter 8, chapter 9, through the end of uh, chapter 12, the end of Daniel, and you'll get a good overview of what the 70 weeks of Daniel is all about, or the final seven years that the Jews owe to God for their sin, and and uh, they need to, there's going to be consequences that they need to endure because of the rejection of Messiah. The world who hates God is going to suffer greatly in this seven-year period, but it's really the seven-year period, it, rather than it be, being called the seven-year tribulation, it would be better if we called the final seven years the, the end of the Gentile rule and reign over planet Earth. 
It's the times of the Gentiles coming to an end. That's what that final seven years is really, really is. It's Israel uh, having to own up to the rejection of the Messiah, the world being judged by the judgments found in Revelation uh, chapter 6 through uh, 18, and then the final war uh, be, uh, as the Lord returns in Revelation chapter 19. Um, so I believe we're not yet in the last days. Some people say we're in the last of the last days. I think we're in the run-up to the final seven years uh, that Daniel talked about in Daniel chapter 9. I think that's what's going on. And uh, as we get closer to that time when the Antichrist comes to power, and I think that this peace treaty with, Bare uh, with uh, the UAE and Israel, I think it could end up leading, being the lead up to the Antichrist uh, finding a way to bring the entire Middle East and Israel together under a false peace agreement. In fact, he could take this peace agreement that President Trump uh, has made with Israel and the UAE, tweak it, make some changes, confirm it with all the Arab nations, um, and we could see the false peace set up ahead of us right now. I mean, I think this is very possible. I don't like to speculate. Because God's ways are not our ways, it's very hard at this point to know potentially what is coming and what shape that and form that's going to take. I mean, would are you like me? Would you ever have thought that COVID-19 would have been used to help stimulate everything we're seeing now? And, and bring about the setup of Bible prophecy like we're seeing now. I mean, I didn't see that coming. Did you? I didn't. And I've been studying Bible prophecy since 1986. And I didn't see it coming at all. Not like this. And I didn't see COVID-19 being the possible element that would end up bringing in a mark of the beast the mark of the beast the that the antichrist will institute i didn't i mean i never saw this development and so we have to not be dogmatic about everything we have to give space that the lord is in charge because his ways aren't our ways, his thoughts aren't ours, things could happen and God could put things into play that will totally blow our minds. So I think we have to be very open to God is running the show and he's totally in charge. And we don't want to be so dogmatic that we rule out uh, certain potentialities that could happen. Um, look, here's what's going on now, too. Let me just touch on this real quick. The UAE and Israel are now working on COVID-19 trials. They think that soon they're going to have a vaccine that will work in immune, uh, uh, providing immunity against COVID-19. Now, this piece deal comes together, right? And now the UAE and Israel have a common working relationship to try to find a vaccine that could be distributed throughout the world. And they believe they are on the verge together of making this happen. That's an amazing thing, isn't it? 
amazing. And then I can foresee that you would want to go to see your doctor because you have some ailment or some health concern. And the doctor's office says, before you come in, you have to be vaccinated for COVID. Otherwise, the doctor can't see you. Well, once that starts happening, it's just a, another step. And the Antichrist could say, well, we need to have a system that will uh, be available to doctors in the medical profession that you've been vaccinated. So we need you to take this mark or have this insignia or have this tattoo or put this film strip that goes on your skin and then becomes part of your skin. We need you to have that. In fact, it's mandatory if you want to buy, sell, eat, et cetera, do, do business. If you want to buy something on the internet, you're going to have to have it. That vaccine could morph into a mark once the Antichrist comes to power that he would want the entire world to have. Now, it's like everything else, okay? You remember back in the 80s when all of these cameras were being experimented on different intersections and they told us, oh, it's for your own good. It's to watch people that run red lights and to send them citations. We're not going to be looking inside your car. None of that's going to be happening. Do you, you remember those days? Uh, maybe you're too young to remember those days, but if you were born, if you grew up in the 60s and 70s, then you remember this. Well, I was screaming back then. Um, we need to be careful because the cameras on our intersections are going to be used against us. They'll be able to spy on us, look inside of our cars. And people said to me, oh, no, stop. That's never going to happen. They're not going to do that. Sure enough. We now know that the FBI has access to all that information. So do local police departments, especially after the Patriot Act got instituted by none other than Bush Jr., President Bush Jr. Thank you for that. Uh, that Patriot Act was a grab on our freedoms and our right to privacy which has opened the door for all these other things to start taking place. And so, you know, now the cameras are used to entrap people and to spy on people. And um, it's evolved into that. Well, I think vaccines, they make me nervous because I think they could evolve into a similar thing where you would have to have a mark and in comes the Antichrist, in comes control, in comes a totalitarian state, and then we're, you know, the whole system is ready uh, for the worst Holocaust that the world's ever seen. Okay, that's just how I feel about that. Uh, I am not telling, it's a, you know what, I'm not telling anyone to get a vaccine or not get a vaccine. It's entirely your decision. It's between you and the Lord. Um, I don't think I'm going to get vaccinated. I don't get vaccinated for the flu now. And I haven't had a flu bug, thank the Lord, in probably over, well, at least 10 to 12 years. So I'm... I'm not going to get vaccinated. That's just me. I, I doubt my wife will. But you have to make that decision on your own. Okay, so we talked about um, the the UAE and Israel putting to uh, working together to come up with a vaccine that they believe will be on the market um, probably by next year. Um, 
We talked about the mandatory vaccines and we talked about the Ezekiel 38 how this see this piece that is is going into place I believe next week with the UAE and Israel this piece has the potential of really ratcheting up the scenario where the man of sin, the Antichrist, the one, when he does come to power, uh, after a treaty is confirmed, one that's already in place. See, the word confirms a very interesting word in Daniel 9. The word confirm means that something is already in place. And when you confirm it, you just, you put your stamp of approval on it. But it's already law. And so this piece now that is being put on the table and getting ready to be signed could be the impetus that would bring in all the loose ends tie everything together. I mean, the third temple in Israel on, on the Temple Mount could start getting built. They have the red heifers now. That was one of the last pieces of the puzzle to have a temple. The Jews needed the red heifer. They now have four of them in waiting. Now, the thing about the heifers my wife knows this because she took agriculture in school. But she knows that there is a specific timeline on a heifer when a heifer goes from being a heifer to a cow. And, and the younger uh, steer, oh, well, not even steer, the younger cow, heifer, okay, uh, has to be used and sacrificed and the ashes used to cleanse the area where the temple is going to be built. So you, you are on a timeline with these heifers. There is a point at which they become too old and they can't be used anymore. Well, okay, that used to be a big problem, right? But now that Israel knows how to develop and how to genetically put the, the bull and the, the cow together to get this red heifer, and they can now farm them um, and raise them. Um, this is an amazing thing. So what used to be, you know, people used to say there's a timeline for the heifers, right? Well, now that Israel can produce he red heifers uh, and do it successfully, that's not as big an issue as it used to be. Uh, so they have four that they've been able to, uh, to produce. Uh, where the cow gave birth to those four. And I'm sure that they're now in a place where they can make more, <laughs> if that's a, the right way to put it. So, yeah, I can see how all of this could lead up to the final seven years of Gentile rule on earth. And then when Jesus comes back, at his second coming, that puts an end to the times of the Gentiles, that seven-year period. That's going to wrap up the times of the Gentiles, and then we're going to move into the time of Messiah, where Jesus, after that seven years is finished and he returns, Jesus will set up his kingdom and will... He will bring the earth back to the splendor like the Garden of Eden. And um, he's going to rebuild.
build and 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 bring the earth back to that pristine level that Adam and Eve knew. It's going to be an amazing thing to be a part of and to watch. And if you know the Lord um, and you are walking with him, you will be with him in that thousand year millennium reign. So we got a lot going on, right? We've got the, the rioting. We've got cities being turned over to Antifa or BLM. And we got all this stuff, the COVID-19. We have, we have Israel and this peace agreement that popped up out of the chaos. Israel and the UAE working on a COVID-19 cure or immuni- a, a shot for immunity, creating herd immunity. We've got all this going on. And we've got Iran that wants to attack Israel. Russia that's upset that Israel and uh, uh, is is encro- encro- encroaching, excuse me, encroaching on their oil and natural gas revenues. A lot's going on, and now China is threatening World War III on the United States. Some believe that we could end up seeing a an aggressive China attack against the United States mainland. If that happened, oh boy, uh, all bets are off. I mean, that's going to be ugly. So we have a lot to pray for, but there's a lot for you if you don't know Christ. There's a lot for you, a lot of motivation for you to ask Christ into your life. Look, um, we see, okay, we see that pastors are saying the rapture of the church could happen at any moment Therefore, you need to ask Christ into your life, and you need to be born again. Okay. But let me give you another scenario. None of us really know when the rapture is going to happen. I mean, we don't know if it's going to be a year or 50 years down the road. We just don't know. But one thing we do know, and the Lord even tells us this in Scripture, You don't know when your soul is going to be required of you. You could die at any second, at any nanosecond of any day. No guarantee that I will live after this video is made. No guarantee that I'll even finish this video. That should be reason enough for you and I to ask Jesus into our lives because we don't know when God is going to punch our ticket and our soul is going to be required of us and we're going to die. And if you die without having faith in Christ and acknowledging your sin and asking him into your life, then you will be eternally separated from him. You'll live forever, but you'll do it without God. And you'll be in hell, suffering in the lake of fire for all eternity. That's what the Bible teaches. On the other flip side of that coin, the Bible teaches Romans chapter 10. Call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Ask Jesus into your life. Confess him as your Lord and Savior. Bow your knees to him. And ask him to change you and to give to you his Holy Spirit. To turn you into a new creation. The wages of sin is death. 
but the free gift of Jesus Christ is eternal life. Romans 6, 23. It's a free gift that God offers. And all we have to do is say, Lord, we need you. I believe in you. Forgive me of my sins and my trespasses. Help me to make it right with those that I've offended. Help me to be a new creation in you by the renewing of my mind and heart through your Holy Spirit. I put my trust in you, Lord. That's all you got to do. And then you'll be with him forever. And remember, humans will live forever in one of two places, either in heaven or in hell. There, that's the way it is. You will live forever. You get to choose where that forever will be, with Jesus and with God the Father and all of us, or by yourself in total darkness, in pain and suffering, in the lake of fire for all eternity. Your choice. And I hope you make the right decision. This is Bro Steph. Go to brosteph.com, scroll down half the page, and look into asking Christ into your life. God bless you. I'll see you again on another Prophecy Insights with me, Bro Steph. I hope this has encouraged you. God loves you and wants to rescue your soul. Give Jesus a chance. You'll never regret it. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Keep looking up. Jesus is coming back soon.